allow me to introduce you to award-winning animator, Mr. Richard Williams. He was brought in to direct the animation on Roger Rabbit. His initial sketches established what Roger would look like, and it assisted the filmmakers in figuring out all the aspects of tune acting. <laughs> Wouldn't you know, <laughs> It was a big challenge trying to figure out how to take a cartoon character Whoa. and a human actor and try and figure out how to put them in the same scene and make them look seamless. The butcher, the baker, they didn't know. But the liquor store guy, he knew. And I don't hey! Wait, hold it. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Just let me back up a little. Whoa! <laughs> Long before the filming was started, a series of storyboards was created. These are simple sketches that are arranged like panels in a comic strip, and they show the filmmakers what the action is going to look like on the screen. Whoa! Now, before the animation started, the filmmakers had to shoot all of these scenes using only the human actors. Why? Because the tunes would be added in later. Let's take a look at what I'm talking about. Take one. Good looking guy like that. <laughs> the Danes will be breaking his door down. <laughs> Danes? What Danes? Don't think the only one for me. You'll see. We'll rise above this piddling piccadillo. We're gonna be happy again. You got that? Happy. Capital H A P P I. <laughs> When Steven Spielberg saw the first cut of the movie, before the tunes were added, he said that it looked like the Invisible Man Returns. To help out the actors, rubber dolls of the missing cartoon characters were used as a reference. Going towards the lens. His arm is in relationship to his eyes. So if your hand's like this, he's, we're cutting him at the eyes, the bottom of the frame line. You gotta get that up so that, yeah. They brought toon actors to the set to do voices while they filmed the humans. What's wrong with that take? Say something. Look, stop! <laughs> By the way, the suit was my idea. I wore it every day during filming. There were a lot of props that they didn't want the tunes to handle because, you know, you never really know what's gonna happen when tunes handle props. So what did they do? They had a special effects team come in and figure out how to move things around in the real world before the tunes were ever able to get a hold of them. How did they do it? They built mechanical devices, which then picked things up on the set. And you never get to see these contraptions in the movie because they were covered over by the animation. That is brilliant. Thanks. I needed that. Additionally, a group of puppeteers lent a hand in moving certain props around on wires, making it appear as if missing tune characters were right there on the set. We got a reliable tip-off. The rabbit was here. You keep talking like that, and I'm gonna have to wash your mouth out. <laughs> Through the magic of the special effects team and the artistry of the puppeteers, the invisible tunes came to life. So, this robotic arm later became a plate-smashing Roger Rabbit. And this tray would soon be carried by a penguin waiter. And these weapons would soon be wielded by weasel. Eh, Valiant's got him stashed somewhere. When it came time to pull it all together, they filmed the scenes with the special effects, the actors, but no tunes. Ready! <laughs> Action! 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 And cut! How was that, Mr. Zemetkis? I'm bad. Boy, Once again, yeah. one more. Once the human actors finished their scenes, the animators went into action. Director Robert Zemetkis worked very closely with Richard Williams and his team of animators to integrate the animation with the live action that had already been shot. 
and the rabbit's like doesn't want to go back in and Hoskins is pushing him down and pushing him down and straining him and like just <laughs> like doing like toon squash on the top of his head. But tell me, Eddie, is that a rabbit in your pocket or you're just happy to see me? More than 300 of the best animators and production personnel from all over the world were brought together to work on Who Framed Roger Rabbit. To add animation to a scene, every frame of live action footage was made into a still photograph, and then the animators had to hand draw every frame on top of each photo. No computers were used. Now think about that. Someone had to draw every minute movement of the tunes, frame by frame, and then hand paint all the colors onto each cell. Okay, 